What's up, guys? It's Man Flavor. Um, today, I got another cigar review. I'm actually I'm in the car. I'm got about a two and a half hour, three hour car drive ahead of me, so I figure I'll have a cigar that I just got in yesterday and um, give this one a shot. This is a Park Avenue uh, Maduro. There's a whole bunch of crap on here, and um, I'll just show you that. And I know this isn't the greatest camera view, but this is what I this is what I got to work with. Anyways, a slightly toothy wrapper, pretty dark Maduro wrapper, nice band. I believe this uh, this is in some type of torp size. It's obviously you got the torp here. Looks like a maybe a five and a half by fifty four, maybe something like that. I don't know. Maybe it says on here. No, I don't. I don't see it on here. Anyways, um, I kind of want to get get this going quick, so um, so I can get on the road a bit. It's got a slightly sweet, and I'm, I'm trying to. It's kind of hard to peg. It's kind of a. I know before I, this has been out of the humidor for probably 20 minutes now. Um, when I when I just pulled it out of the humidor, I remember getting somewhat of a dark chocolatey kind of a creamy aroma. Um, now it's just kind of a light, and, and before it was really strong, it was really bold. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll just leave it at that and uh, cut this up. I just got a shipment in yesterday. Huge, huge shipment. And there's a little defect of wrappers. There's just a little itty bitty part right there that's uh, the wrapper came off. Huge shipment. I got, I don't know how many scars I got. I got probably, uh, Wrappers coming off. I don't know how many cigars I got yesterday. I probably got over a hundred cigars. But I'm uh, back going back down the mountain today because uh, my dog got sick. He got really, really sick while I was uh, I was away. I went out of state for a while, and uh, I had to come home early and uh, take him to the vet. that a shot. Let's get on the road. Like I said, I know this isn't the greatest camera view, but this is what's going to have to work. So, right off the light, I'm getting this really, really nasty um, chemically taste, chemical taste. Don't like that. I don't like it at all. It's 
really, really gross. I'm hoping it'll go away soon because that's really, really nasty. That's better get better because uh, cause I think I bought, I think this one I, where I bought a box of them, I bought a box of 20. You know, on that cigar sprint sale. Oh. I hope to God this gets better. But, anyways, this might be some one of the, uh, Stogies and Stories video because uh, you know I haven't posted the video in at least a week. So I went off to uh, I went off to Texas to Lackland, Texas, or uh, shit, what is that? San Antonio, Texas, to Lackland Air Force Base because my youngest brother just graduated basic uh, basic military training from the Air Force. So me and both of my brothers are all Air Force. Uh, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. Um, and being back at Lackland, now I've been to Lackland three times now. Once for basic when I went, and I was the first, I'm the oldest. And so I went and then I went back for when my middle brother went. And that was still weird. And then, uh, and I went in uniform that time. I was wearing my blues that time for his. Um, but this time, uh, for my youngest brothers, my youngest brother, um, I'm inactive right now. That's why I can grow my beard. So I can still wear my uniform if I want to. But I kind of just didn't want to deal with all the saluting and all the officers and didn't want to have to shave my beard. But uh, so I just went, I just, I just dressed nicely. And I also knew that if I went in my blues, my parents would just not stop taking photos of us. Just, and I just, I can't stand that. Oh my God, I was standing up for the, um, what do you call it, the uh, National Anthem. They were playing the National Anthem. And, uh, you know, being military, you know, when the National Anthem plays, you, uh, you stand up, you salute, and you don't move. You don't move till... You salute at the first note, and you do not stop saluting until the last note is played. So, and it's a very personal thing. Um, you know, it's it's. I don't I don't know if it's a military thing, you know, or a patriotic thing, but um, that uh, the flag means something to military. And when my mom would shove, like she was standing behind me. And she shoved my face out of the way because I guess I was in the way of her camera, of her taking pictures. And she did that last time too. It just pisses me off so much. Like they just think it's so cool that I salute the flag, and um, and they want to take pictures of me saluting. And and same thing with uh, my grandpa. My grandpa is uh, used to be in the Army Air Corps, and uh, back in World War II. Yeah. And um, at my middle brother's graduation, he went, and they asked for all military, uh, in uniform, out of uniform, currently serving, ex-military, retired, all, everybody, to uh, surrender the proper courtesy, which for that day was going to be a salute. They wanted every, all the military to salute the flag. And so my grandpa threw up a salute, and I guess this is like... The first time my parents have ever seen that and so they just wouldn't stop taking pictures during the national anthem and it's like you have absolutely no respect whatsoever I just I cannot believe it and it's okay if you know if they don't feel the same way about the flag that that I do but at least try and understand that for us for military 
uh, it's kind of a special thing. And don't just don't mess with that. I can't think of the right word. All right, I'm still getting a little bit of that chemically taste. It's going to be a slow burner. Um, but it died down a little bit. And then, getting back to my my rant, um, and then there was another ceremony where I had told her beforehand. Well, she started saying, hey, um, I don't want to, I don't want to give their names away, I don't know. I don't know if they'd like that, but uh, I'll just call them mom and dad in every every perspective. Um, she'd say, uh, hey dad, um, do you want to take a picture while they salute or should I? And at that point I'm like, you know, he's not going to be able to because he's going to be holding his hand over his heart just like everybody else. And not taking pictures, people who don't respect the flag. And... Uh, I think she got she got the hint that time, but it, it still doesn't change anything. My parents are so stubborn; they they don't they don't they don't respect much at all, except their own possessions. I would say. Yeah, it's it's really annoying. It sucks. Anyways, um, yeah. So I went to Texas for I guess I was only there for about four days. I was supposed to spend like six days there. But um, my dog got sick. He got, he got really sick. I got a call um, one evening from my buddy who was watching him. And um, he called me up and he said, uh, Hey, I, I think Toby needs to go to the vet because uh, he's urinating blood. It's, it's just a constant stream of blood. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, take him to the vet. Here's the vet that I go to. I've got insurance there, so everything should be free. And uh, it would have been if it was a, kind of a simple just here take some drugs type of deal, but um, it was I guess it, it was really really bad. Um, he he was very anemic, and what was going on is his uh, immune system was attacking. Excuse me, his immune system was attacking his red blood cells, uh, and. The amount of red blood cells that a dog is supposed to have, it's between right around between 40 and 50 percent red blood cells. So, if you take, um, if you take, uh, am I going to get pulled over right here? I'm going 40 and a 50. Um, anyways, if you take. Uh, like a vial of blood, 40 to 50% of that should be red blood cells. Um, and he was down, when I got home, he was down to 19. So we had to give him a transfusion as soon as we got home. And uh, so he got a transfusion as soon as we got home. That put him back up to like 27. And the next day he dropped all the way back down to like 23. And then the next day he dropped down to 17. And then we had to give him another blood transfusion. So, he hasn't been doing well, but, so he's gotten two blood transfusions now, over the, la over the last, like, four or five days, he's gotten two blood transfusions, and he's gotten, um, let's see, he's gotten, uh, this immune globulin, which the immune globulin is, uh, it's this experimental thing, they use it on humans all the time, but, um, on dogs, it's experimental, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spit numbers, but that was expensive, and it ended up that it didn't work whatsoever, it didn't work at all. So, uh, so yeah, Toby's not well, but uh, yesterday, let's see, no, it wasn't yesterday. The day before yesterday, he got his last transfusion, and it put his uh, they call it a PCV. I, I can't remember what a PC what it stands for. Whoa, dude! But um, they uh, his blood count, his red blood cell count was at uh, thirty. 
So that was two days ago. And then yesterday, I gave him another blood cell count, PCD, and that stayed at 30. So, so that's good. It stayed at 30. And uh, so I got to go back today. It's going to be, like I said, about a three hour drive to go back today and uh, get his PCV taken again. So, anyways, and he's only five years old, so I, I was not expecting all this. They said when I got the phone call from the doctor when I was still in Texas, um, they said it could be cancer, it could be a tick bite, it could be infectious. Um, they didn't know what it was, they had no idea. And, uh, yeah, so that was kind of a scare. Yeah, I don't know if I'm about to get pulled over or if this cop just wanted to pull him behind me, but he was waiting on the side of the road. And like I said, it is snowing, but or it's not snowing, but there's snow on the ground. And I was going like 40, like between 35 and 40 in a 55. So, you know, with there being snow and ice on the ground, I figure that's, that's about the right speed. I was going with the flow of traffic. But what might have happened is I got an Air Force sticker on my windshield, on the back of my windshield, so he might have seen that and decided to give me a break. But I'm definitely, I'm minding my speed right now. There's, there's nothing wrong with my truck, so I don't know, you know, there's no, there's no other reason that, uh, I should get pulled over other than my speed. But anyways, uh, well, let's get, let's get back to the cigar a little bit. I'm gonna have to relight it, I think. I went and I gabbed too long, but um, it's kind of a. Uh, I'm getting a little, a little woodsy, a little spicy. I don't know, just kind of a. It's still there's still a little bit of chemical in there too, so it's just kind of a. Not a very attractive flavor so far. I don't. I don't think anybody would would particularly uh, enjoy this flavor a lot. I think it would be. It's, it it kind of tastes like a like a cheap cigar right now, like a like a dirty cigar. But I'm really hoping it'll. Uh, It'll turn around. Yep, that uh, that cop went away. It looked like he was gonna pull me over, but he either uh, decided to give me a break after he saw my sticker, or or he just felt like getting out at that time. But uh, anyways, I'll uh, I'll get back to you guys on the cigar. Uh, maybe when the flavors change, hopefully soon. And. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about my trip. All right, guys, Bye. Back. Just had to uh, <coughs> stop and get some gas. Noticed gas prices have uh, gone up again a little bit. It's, uh, just paid 3.75 at Chevron for regular. But uh, had to uh, had to relight this once. I had to relight this once because it just it just died on me. I think I'm, I might have done that on camera. And then just now when I was getting some gas, um, when I'm smoking on the truck and I gotta get out or something, I I put I put it in the grill, uh, the grill of the truck, and uh, usually they'll last for you know five minutes without without having to puff on it. But uh, this time it went out again, so I had to relight it again. So two relights, and um, oh, and the other thing is, I uh, I thought I'd use the better camera because since I'm driving, I don't really need to see myself. So 
the picture quality might be a little better. But uh, let's see, what was I getting at? Well, I guess it's uh, it's smoking a little better. The uh, the chemical taste has really died down, but it's still there. This taste is from like pesticides or, or what, but I can't imagine it's there on purpose. I think it might be getting a little hard to hear me, so I'm gonna roll up the window a little bit. See if that helps. But uh, yeah, now it's just kind of a it's just a tobacco flavor. I mean, it only tastes, it, it almost tastes like smoking a cigarette. I'd say like a, kind of tastes like a harsh cigarette, like might be a Marlboro Red or something like that. the only good thing it's got going for it is the spicy flavor and um, uh, yeah I guess it's kind of just like a like an average spicy flavor with uh, with tobacco so and then like on the after tasting man it tastes like doo-doo man with this but it's not like a it's not a I just say it tastes like doo-doo but it's not like a like a disgusting cigar that I just can't smoke but uh, it's definitely not not anything to write home about definitely right off the light though when it was like uh, right off the light when was like really chemically, uh, chemical tasting, it, that was disgusting, that was absolutely gross. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about my, uh, my trip. Um, we, we actually, we did have a lot of fun, a lot of fun in, uh, in Texas. Um, you know, being it was my brother's graduation, I, we got to see him for, I think, a total of three days. Maybe four days. I don't remember. Because I wasn't there for, I think, one or two of them. I wasn't there for one of them. And the last one, when I got when I got that call from, from the doc about Toby, I was just, I was out of the game. It was when she said it could have been cancer and you know, he might not make it. I was just, I was, I was done for. I was, I was uh, not up for uh, partying anymore. But anyways, we did have, some, we did have some fun. Um, if you find yourselves in San Antonio, um, right there on the Riverwalk. First off, the Riverwalk is just awesome. It just. It's beautiful. I mean, the water's nice. I mean, uh, when we went, they were doing some construction on it, so that kind of sucked. But uh, it's really nice. So you definitely got to check out the Riverwalk. And if you go, and it's not um, like military related, like uh, like it's your brother, your son, or your daughter that uh, graduated from basic, you definitely want to go on a weekday because every weekend they get the. Uh, you know, they get the military guys that graduate basic, and the place is just absolutely crowded. It's it's packed. So if you can help it, try and go on a weekday, like like Monday through Friday. Yeah, weekdays. 
because uh, I think Fridays they have to stay on base, but you can't see them. And then Saturday, no, I'm thinking it's Thursday. Maybe Thursday they stay on base, and then and then yeah, Thursday they stay on base, and then Friday and Saturday and S Friday and Saturday they can go off base, and Sunday if they if they do well, like if they uh, it's like it's like a bonus day that if you get Sunday off, it's because you did something really good and uh, you kind of get a bonus day. So definitely try to go uh, Monday, between Monday and Thursday, I would say. And uh, if you go, uh, there's the Alamo there. The Alamo is, it's kind of a letdown. It's like, uh, I mean, it's a cool building from the outside. If from the outside looking at it, it looks really nice. But as soon as you go inside, it's just, all it is is a gift shop. And they've got some, like some barracks in there that, uh, you know, they've got, they've got some items behind glass and stuff like that, but all kind of museum-like, but it's really, really a letdown. The whole thing is just, just a freaking tourist, um, gift shop. So it's really a letdown, but it's right there on the river walk. You might as well just go poke your head in for five minutes, just take a look at it just so you can say you saw it I've seen it three times now and the first time I went um, I mean it was nice because uh, I mean just the area around it like I said looking from the outside in it's it's a really nice garden area they got a whole bunch of big oak trees um, with some you know some uh, pay, uh, some stones like uh, like walking stones or not cobblestone, but kind of, you know, just nice stones on the, on the ground to walk on. And it's really, it's really, it's really nice, uh, a nice garden type thing. But as soon as you step in and you want to learn some history about the Alamo, it's just, it's worthless, man. It's worthless. But anyways, you go see the Alamo, right across the street from the Alamo is the, uh, you got the Ripley's, uh, Wax Museum, you've got, uh, they got this, 4D movie, it's like one of those things where you sit in a chair and it moves and stuff. That kind of sucks. It, it really sucked. Go to like a California Adventure, right right across the street from Disneyland in California, and that's way, way better. They've got, they've got this ride there that's really, really cool. It's one of those 4D rides, way, way better than the Ripley's. The Ripley's one just, it was, uh, it just sucked. You know, maybe some really young kids like, uh, like under the age of 10 might like it. But um, oh, here's another cop. Thankfully, I'm going going the speed limit. But uh, yeah, he's gonna let me go. I was going I was going three over the speed limit, so I'm good. They the cops they love this road, man. I'm not gonna tell you which road, so you don't know where I live. But they absolutely love this road. And uh, let's see. So you got the the wax museum. They've got the uh, that 4D movie thing. And then they've got the, uh, just the Ripley's, believe it or not, kind of museum. And the museum is awesome. And the, uh, the wax museum is pretty cool. The, the wax museum now, it's like all the, all the figures are like really, really worn. Um, so you can obviously tell who everybody is, but they're not, it's not like an identical thing. Um, there's a couple of them where you're like, I can't tell if this is a person or a wax figure. And if it's a person, it's gonna, I'm going to be pretty embarrassed because I'm like getting up in this guy's face trying to figure out if it's a statue or not. But anyways, I would, I would make an effort to see the Ripley's place. And, um, but the funnest thing is the mirror maze. And uh, most people know what a mirror maze is, but if you don't, it's, it's basically this maze full of a whole bunch of mirrors where you can't tell and it's kind of dark and there's like some lights on the floor so it really kind of messes with your senses and you can't tell if if that's the way out or if that's just a reflection of the way out and so um, that's really 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 fun we had a lot of fun in that the whole f you just get lost in there I mean you get turned around you get uh, you get you know, turn around so you're you go out the same way you came in, and you're like, oh crap, I gotta find the exit. So you could easily spend a good hour just in the 
not just uh, you can spend an hour just playing around in there and, and be entertained not not get lost in the mirror maze for an hour it only takes probably maybe 15 minutes to figure your way out but uh and also they've got this laser thing where it's like uh it's like a mission impossible type deal or or something like that or uh What's that other movie they did it in, like, with, uh, I can't remember her name, Catherine Zeta-Jones, where she was, like, like, getting through the lasers, the laser obstacle course. They've got, they've got that in the mirror maze, and that was, that was a lot, a lot of fun. They've got, like, four different settings. You can do easy, medium, hard, and expert, and it's just, it is a lot of fun for young kids, old kids, adults, it's just, it's fun. So definitely check that out. And then, you know, there's obviously some good restaurants. Um, there's a lot of good restaurants there, so it's kind of hard to, to say which restaurants to go to. They're all pretty good. We stayed in the Embassy Suites, and they had this uh, restaurant at the bottom of Embassy Suites where, you know, anybody can go. You don't have to be staying at there at the hotel and going to this restaurant. It's open to the Riverwalk, too, so you can, if you rock, walk in the Riverwalk, you can just go through the door and, um, to this, uh, this restaurant. It's called Luke's. L-U-K-E-S, I believe. It's Luke's. And, um, they've got this burger there, this hamburger, that is incredible. They use uh, prime prime steak, so it's like uh, they use three different cuts of beef to make the hamburger, and it it really tastes like you're biting into a steak. And you know the bun's great, and all the condiments they're good, and they give you these little itty bitty uh, Heinz ketchup, mustard, and mayo bottles. Those are pretty cool. We took a bunch home because we're going to use them for shot glasses. They look like like about two ounce, um, maybe one and a half ounce, one and a half or two ounce, uh, little glasses. There was this cow that was literally like, his front legs are over the fence and his back legs are on the other side of the fence. And he's just standing there like he's stuck. That's, that was weird. How the hell did he do that? But, yeah, anyways, it's a, San Antonio is a really nice place. It's a really good time. The people there, you know, are pretty friendly. I mean, I mean, of course they have to be because they're, you know, they, they deal with tourists all the time. Let my, uh, let my cigar die again. again. And you got moved over. I'm on this really windy road now. I'm gonna try and just get this lit up again. Um, another place to go, we didn't see it this time because we've seen it twice before, but it was the, uh, the Space Needle, I think they call it. There's a, there's a restaurant at the top and it's basically this big old um, tower that uh, it kind of spins around like really, really slowly, but it you can just see the you get a whole view of the whole place. So that's kind of that's it's it's pretty cool. I'd go there at least once if you. Uh, and there's like I said, if there's there's a restaurant at the top, and um, the restaurant. Uh, let's see. I went. I think last time I went there was six years ago. Um, but the rest, I wasn't totally impressed with the restaurant. It kind of, it looks like a really nice and almost a formal, like a, a collar and tie type of restaurant. And I'm sure some people will say the food there was really good. I just thought it was kind of average. And uh, it is kind of pricey, though. I'd, I'd say you're gonna spend around 30 bucks a meal, where it's not, it's not too bad. I'd say between 30 and 40 bucks a meal. 
but it's not too terribly bad, but still, it's kind of on the pricier side. But it is kind of nice to sit by the window, and you're constantly rotating, so it is, it's a little weird. Uh, you might feel a little, a little nauseous, but you're rotating just very, very slowly, like maybe one inch every second, I would say. Um, but you get, you know, you sit down there for a meal, you do a whole rotation, and and you just kind of see everything. So that's cool. It's worth, it's worth having a look. Um, but another really fun thing that that I went and did um, just this last time was it was for the first time. It was the first time I ever went to a hockey game. We went to um, oh, what is it called? The Rampage. Um, I guess it's like a like a minor league um, hockey team, and it was it was really cool. Like I I've seen hockey on TV sometimes, and you know it's it's whatever you know it's entertaining to watch, but I don't really follow it too much. But seeing a hockey game in uh, you know live was really cool. The only thing that kind of sucked about it is they stop a lot. I mean, it's anytime, like, anytime the, uh, somebody, god damn, I'm sorry. Anytime somebody shoots the puck too far, they stop it. Anytime the goalie gets the puck, gets possession of the puck, they stop it and they reset. Which, I mean, if it's like football, you know, football, you're not, football, they have way more breaks than that. But I was kind of imagining like a like a soccer or a basketball tempo of gameplay. And they just, I think they just stop it too much, which, you know, they're not going to change the rules just so that, you know, they can, uh, uh, so that they can keep the game going. But, I mean, it's just one thing to consider if it's your first time seeing a hockey game. And uh, we can go into the debate whether hockey is more hardcore than football, which it's not. But we might touch on that. But um, yeah, like there was there was like one fight where the dude got uh, got put in the penalty box, and I mean it's not it's not even it wasn't even like a good fight. It was just this dude being a prick. Like, I don't know what set him off, but this dude, this dude on the Rampage team was just skating around, and this other guy just kept on, like, jabbing him, hitting him with a stick and stuff like that, just, like, chasing him. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, like, stop being such a prick. I mean, if you want to start a fight, just start swinging, but, I mean, I don't know. It was... It's just not, not, not a type of person that I would support. But, and then, like, when they get rammed in the glass, like, that's nothing, dude. Like, at number one, you're in a ton of padding, like, way more padding than football. And the glass is, like, flexible. And, you know, it moves. Every time you hit it, it moves six inches. So, it's like a freaking cushion. Like, don't tell me that... That that hockey is more hardcore than football. Football, you guys are running full speed, and uh, when you get tackled, it's like a dead stop. It's, you know, it's it's 100% impact. In hockey, you just got so much cushion everywhere that I, I don't even understand how people can get hurt in hockey. Um, other than some of them don't wear face shields, and I think that's just stupid. I mean, you got pucks flying everywhere, um, you know, sometimes these pucks can get airborne, and I, and uh, sticks flying everywhere. And why would you not want to protect your face? Um, that's the only. That's the only reason why hockey might be a little bit more hardcore in football in that aspect. And it's just because they're fucking stupid and they don't wear face shields. They don't wear a fucking face shield. Protect your face, man. Maybe take some of the padding off your shoulders and. Um, and your upper body and your gloves and all that crap and put some on your face. I mean, just stupid. Doesn't make any sense. 
All right, let's let's see if this thing's still lit. Really had to uh, puff on that thing. Yeah, it tastes like mm, it tastes like just a really really cheap cigar. Um, like a it tastes like a machine made, like a backwoods, like the backwoods original. <laughs> kind of got that a little bit of a chemical taste, and then just just tobacco and poo. I mean, it's it's not great. I'm gonna have to. This will be my cigar where. Uh, you know, if somebody comes up and we want to smoke cigars, I'll give them one of these. It just sucks because I got 20 of these things. And again, this is the Park Avenue Maduro. And I got it, number one, because it was on the cigar sprint sale. It was a really good deal. Um, I don't remember what I paid for it, but um, if I bought it, it must have been like half off or more um, but uh, I got it because the Park Avenue Connecticut is you know from what I understand a pretty popular cigar but I don't like I don't really care for Connecticut wrappers that much so I thought I'd get it in the uh, Maduro yeah I'm just not impressed, man. I think it kind of sucks. But uh, I think I kind of ran out of stuff to talk about on my trip, so I'll uh, I'll just I guess I'll get back to you when uh, if the flavors change or when I finish this thing off. I've also got a uh, this uh, uh, AJ Fernandez Fresh Roll in Corona that I'll smoke next because I, like I said it is it's a long long car ride I'm not even halfway there yet so we'll see if I got enough space on my phone to uh, to do two uh, two videos tastes like crap all right guys I went ahead and put it back to the uh, the front camera because I noticed the other angle was pretty atrocious but um, coming up here down to the uh, well, last third I'd say I'm just getting into the last third but I'm just gonna wrap it up now because it's it's starting to get worse I'm really not enjoying this cigar at all um, now the uh, the spicy flavor which what was before spicy is now kind of a minty menthol so it really, really tastes like a cigarette. All I'm getting is tobacco, a little bit of chemical flavor, and menthol. So, I would recommend this cigar to maybe somebody who currently smokes cigarettes and wants to give cigars a try. And maybe, uh, maybe you've putted around with some like Swishers or or backwoods or Phillies, anything like that, any of that, that you know, kind of cheaper um, grocery store type cigars. And you kind of want to, maybe you got an occasion coming up, or you know, you just want to kind of put your get your foot in the door with cigars. Um, I would suggest this one to you because it is uh, this cigar. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but. I would really assume it's pretty affordable. Affordable. Number one, since I bought it, it's got to be affordable. And number two, just the way it tastes, it's it's got to be affordable. I I wouldn't pay more than two dollars for the cigar. Um, that's probably about what I paid, if not between two and three. But it is uh, it's a pretty low end cigar. But like I said, if you just want to get your foot in the door or you know, there's so many cigars out there, you want to try one, you don't know which. This, I would say, this is like a beginner cigar. This is 
so much like um, a cigarette that basically it gives you the cigar experience, but with a flavor that you're more familiar with. But if you want a cigar, if you want to be impressed by cigars, and you want uh, you want a cigar that'll just blow you away, this is not the one. Um, for me, I wanted, when I quit smoking cigarettes, I wanted to get in cigars, and I wanted to smoke cigars that were so good, I would never want to smoke cigarettes again. Um, this is not the one. I mean, this is basically a giant cigarette. Uh, it's got all the same flavors as cigarettes do, except for that you know that those flavors right off the right off the light that were just kind of nasty. Um, get beyond that, and you're gonna have to use to that if you're new to cigars because every, every cigar, I'm not gonna say every cigar, but I would say 90 percent. I would comfortably say 90 percent of the cigars uh, that you smoke will start out as soon as you light it. Start out tasting, excuse me, not tasting as good as it will once you get into the first third. So, if you're a cigarette smoker, and uh, if for whatever reason you want to try a cigar, and you want to try a cigar that's not going to be too intimidating, or, uh, you know, too unfamiliar, I would say go with this Park Avenue Maduro, and maybe the Park Avenue Connecticut. Um, I haven't tried the Connecticut, but like I said, I'm not a big Connecticut fan. So I would I would give Park Avenue a shot if if that's your case. If you are a devout cigar smoker, you know obviously you know what kind of taste you like. So I'm not going to tell you that this is not to get the. What the fuck are you doing? Seriously, I'm. I'm on the highway, freaking going 60 miles an hour, or something like this. They're doing construction. This dude, as like, I'm like an eighth of a mile away, closer than that, maybe 300 yards away, and this Caltrans worker just like leisurely walks across the road, making me slam on my brakes. Like I was already slowing down because I was coming up into construction, but still, this dude, I I should have sped up and hit that fucker. I don't like people like that. But, um, anyways, if you're a seasoned cigar smoker, I'm not going to tell you not to buy the cigar because I know all cigar smokers have different tastes. But, um, you know, it's definitely not for me. This is definitely a lower end, lower quality cigar, in my opinion, that, uh, that I will not buy again. Um, off of this experience, I will not buy it again. Number one, the draw was fine. I didn't mention that before, but the draw was fine all the way through. But the burn, uh -huh. but the burn was just hectic and random. Um, it, 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 it keeps on wanting to go out on you. I mean, I know with uh, Maduro wrappers, they're not. They're not going to always burn uh, straight, but uh, this was not just the wrapper. It was the filler that was. They just kept on wanting to go out on you, um, and it might have had something. You know, it was probably affected a little bit by me smoking in the car with the window down a little bit and kind of the wind getting in it. But I've smoked cigars before in the truck, and I've never, I've never had a problem like this. Always wants to go out on you. Um, like I said, I told you what the tastes were. It was like a, it was just a tobacco flavor with uh, slightly, well, a lot of chemical at the beginning, and then it kind of died down as, as you got through the cigar. But still, um, and at the end, well, the last third about, it turned into a, uh, it turned into a menthol flavor, and I don't even smoke menthol cigarettes, so it was like. This is not enjoyable for me at all. Um, like I said, having said that, if you're if you're a seasoned cigar smoker, you might like it. Um, I would guess that most uh, cigar smokers 
that like the high quality stuff, like the Rocket Patel and the AJ Fernandez and Don Papine, um, you know, all those uh, all those good quality Romeo, Romeo and Julieta, uh, Padrones, all those big name cigars uh, and those big name blenders, Alec Bradley maybe, I don't, I don't know how many Alec Bradleys I have. Anyways, if you're into those big name cigar brands, um, I do not think you would enjoy this. Uh, it's just not uh, not up to par in any way. The wrapper kept on breaking apart, falling off. Um, that might be because no, I doubt it because uh, the company that I get it from, Cigar.com, they put these little uh, humidity pillows in in the bags that you get. Well, actually, no. This one was in a. This one came out of a box. Never mind. So it could have been dry out of the box, but uh, and like I said, I just got it in yesterday, so it's only been my in my humidor for overnight. So it could have been a little dry, uh, you know. That might um, assume some of the responsibility for the wrapper falling apart, but the wrapper fell apart in multiple areas, kept on falling apart all over the place. Um, as soon as I snipped the cap, the wrapper started falling apart. Uh, it was just, there was not one good thing about the scar, I don't think. Not one positive thing I can say about it. Other than it's, it's affordable. So, like I said, new cigar smokers, beginners, you might want to pick up maybe one or two. I wouldn't pick up a box because, like I said, I certainly didn't like it, so I wouldn't want you to waste your money like I did and not enjoy 20 of them. But um, I would say new cigar smokers give it a shot. Uh, seasoned cigar smokers, I'm not going to tell you not to buy it, but at the same time, I wouldn't recommend it. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put this piece of crap out. This is... This is just about the definition of a shit stick. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this one out and uh, maybe uh, light up this uh, fresh roll to kind of get some of this taste out of my mouth. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks for hanging in there. It's been Man Flavor. I'll see you next time.